So good morning everyone. It's nice to see you all back here again and this morning we're going to study the um, health principles that God has put into his word but especially that we see in the great life giver Jesus himself and from his healing power we know that the um, truth is given to us that healing comes from God and that God is a great healer and deliverer of people for spiritual, mental and physical power. So let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 first and we want to read there in verses um, 22 I think it is and onwards um, it's verse 23 of First Thessalonians chapter 5 and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that called you, who also will do it. So here we have a wonderful promise from God in the scriptures. And this promise teaches us that in body, soul and spirit, this down, body, soul, and spirit. God wants to sanctify us or to make us whole. To sanctify means to make whole. And this is a major part, or the part of the gospel, to make us whole in every way, spiritually, mentally, and physically. And he wants to make us blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he wants to give us a whole body one that functions properly and a good mind that functions according to God's will. Faithful is he that called you who also will do it. So it's God who will enable this to be done. God will enable it to happen. And this is a wonderful promise from God to um, introduce this morning because biblical health is what we are talking about this morning. And it's based on the healing power of Jesus. healing power of God, but it's through Jesus. And this healing power is for everyone. And Jesus gives his good gifts to everyone. For instance, if we cut our hand with the knife, or if we hurt our back, or if we eat something that disagrees with our stomach accidentally, then God's healing power is at work to restore health. And this is 
connected with our immune system, which God has given to us in the beginning when he created the human body. Let's read one or two other verses uh, also from the scriptures. And if we go to John, the, the fifth John, sorry, third John, And verse 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. So that it is God's will that we be in good health. And our soul does prosper in Christ. So Christ heals us mentally when we come to him. He heals us spiritually, mentally, but also physically. And so here John is making this point. We'll read also while we're in uh, this part of the scriptures, 1 John chapter 5, and we'll read verse 11. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. So eternal life is in Jesus. And it goes on to say, He that hath the Son has life, and he that hath not the Son has not life. So this is how we can begin a new life, to have the Son, because eternal life is in the Son, and health comes. From God. This is the key that is not appreciated in our modern society today. People think that um, just by putting something into your body, you can restore health. And if it's some kind of poisonous substance, then how can that restore health to a person? We need to put in good things to restore health. And Jesus is the giver of health. It comes from God. And God is the one who designed us in the first place. So, for this reason, we should look to God first to get health from Him. And we'll also read from John 10, verse 10. And here we read, The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. So Satan is the thief that wants to take away our health. Satan is the thief. That wants to take away our health, but Jesus comes to give us life abundantly. More abundantly.
And this is what we should be aiming for, to get that life more abundantly. So this morning we're going to um, base a lot of what we talk about, as well as um, from directly from the scriptures, also from this book, Jesus the Rest Giver, that Behold Your God Ministry produces. And this is a book that outlines some of the things that we will be talking about this morning. So this talks about spiritual, mental and physical health. And it's based on the remedies um, from nature that God has given to us for the purpose of restoring health. Another good book that I would recommend is this book, Ministry of Healing, by Alan White, which is a very good book on healing as well. And I'll just read something from there. Um, because this is very relevant. We want to see that healing comes in the three different areas from God. And most medical work today is only done in the body area. But the work of healing can go on in the three different areas. And this is what makes it effective. This is found on page 17, the chapter, Our Example of Ministry of Healing. Our Lord Jesus Christ came to this world as the unwearied servant of man's necessity. He took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses, that he might minister to every need of humanity. The burden of disease and wretchedness and sin he came to remove. It was his mission to bring men complete re restoration. He came to give them health and peace and perfection of character. So the burden of disease and wretchedness and sin he came to remove. So disease, wretchedness, and sin he came to remove. And disease, when we talk about disease, we normally think of physical health, the physical side of things. When we think of wretchedness, we normally think of the mental side of things. And sin, we think of the spiritual side. So this is a very good um, thought that it's brought out here. And he came to give them health, peace and perfection of character. So he came to give us physical health. He came to give us mental peace, peace with God and perfection of character. And this is a complete healing. And this is the way that we get it by coming to Jesus and to forming a relationship with him, a working relationship, which will give us these outcomes. So the other day we talked about um, health too. And... We won't repeat everything that we said the other day. But I do want to repeat some things. And that when God created us, 
in the beginning, when God created, he put man in a garden. And in that garden were the things that man needed to keep him healthy. He had a relationship with God. He had the natural resources. in that garden to sustain him and so he had this relationship with God he had natural resources and he had a family and so the garden situation is a good situation to find health in. Health is um, dependent on us following God's ways. And one of the places we can follow God's ways is found in the garden. And God also, when they continued when man continued and <clears throat> when he came out of Egypt when he came out of Egypt God gave him some lessons which helped him to restore his health and we'll read from Exodus chapter 15 verse 26 Exodus 15 verse 26 And here the Lord promised, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that heals thee, so originally God put man in a garden but then the people who were following God they became slaves in Egypt and when God led them out of Egypt he took them into a wilderness And God had a purpose in taking them out of Egypt and into the wilderness. And that was to restore them spiritually mentally and physically to what he wanted them to be. What they needed to be to gain true happiness. So they became slaves in Egypt. Then when God brought them out with his mighty power, he led them into a wilderness. And when they came into this wilderness, he gave them manna to eat. He gave them pure water out of the rock. So when they were in Egypt, they learned bad habits as slaves. They learned bad spiritual habits. They learned bad mental habits and physical habits. And when God took them into the wilderness, 
He wanted to retrain them. He wanted to allow them to be tested by what they would find in the wilderness so that they would choose, learn to choose the good things. So he restricted their diet to cleanse them. The restriction of diet, the vegetarian diet he gave, was to cleanse. And it was to restore. They were also tested whether they would learn to obey God. So would they obey? Would they learn to obey? And to obey and follow Christ would bring them mental healing. Would bring them mental healing. Because obedience to God puts us into harmony with God. When we're in harmony with God, healing will come. And then spiritually too, he wanted to give them a new life. A new life in Christ. Here they were slaves, not only to the Egyptians, but they were also slaves to sin. And they had rebellion and hate when they were in Egypt for their slave masters, those who treated them so badly. They developed hate. Now when God brought them into the wilderness, it says in Psalm 105 verse 37, there was not one feeble among them. Not one feeble among them. We might put that down. One hundred and five, verse thirty seven. Not one feeble. among them. So did God's method work? Definitely it worked. It worked very well. Now one of the instructions that God gave to them when they came out of Egypt is found in Leviticus chapter 17 verse 14. Leviticus Chapter 17, verse 14. Let's go there now. Leviticus is in the um, beginning of the Bible. Leviticus 17 and verse 14, but also we'll read a bit of verse 11. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. So Leviticus 17 verse 11. The life of the flesh is in the blood. And then verse 14, for the life of all flesh, the blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore I said unto the children of Israel, you shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh, for the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Whoso eateth it shall be cut off. So there they were forbidden to eat blood.
And we know that originally God gave to his um, created beings a vegetarian diet. We go back to Genesis 1.29. Uh, let's just read that again. Genesis 1.29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. So God gave them this food. It wasn't, there was no animals in there. That was the diet that man was to eat. So that's um, fruits, um, vegetables, some vegetables, and nuts and grains were given to man to eat in the beginning. So when God had an opportunity to take them out of Egypt where they had been eating a lot of flesh foods, then he took them to the wilderness. He gave them a diet which would cleanse and restore them so they could think better and they would have better health. And one of the things that he did is they were forbidden to eat blood. So that is, um, that is very interesting that they were forbidden to eat blood when he brought them out of Egypt. Now later on, when they did eat meat, they had to drain the blood. The blood was to be drained out if they did eat meat. But he certainly didn't want them to eat flesh foods. But Jews today still drain the blood out of their meat so they don't have the blood now when we talk about cleansing the cleansing of Jesus Christ what do we often talk about in connection with that his blood he shed his blood for our sins to cleanse us from our sins not only that, but he also nourishes us through his blood. Jesus nourishes us through his blood. I just want to read some um, of the functions of blood, which I have found on the internet. The eight, eight main functions of blood. So we might make some room here on the board because this is very interesting and we know that God's healing, when God heals, that one of the main ways in which God heals is through the blood. Through the blood of Jesus comes spiritual healing. So, God's healing. Comes through the blood of Jesus. Particularly the spiritual healing. But God's healing in the physical also comes through a connection with blood. And that connection with blood, physical healing, is 
is not eating the blood of animals. So God's physical healing comes through blood, not eating blood, but it, physical healing comes through eating um, vegetable, particularly um, chlorophyll. Chlorophyll has been shown, which is the, it's like the, uh, the green pigment in greens in particular. The chlorophyll has been shown to have tremendous healing powers. And this chlorophyll is very similar to blood. In fact, its makeup is almost the same, chlorophyll and blood. But this is God's cleansing of the physical. There's an L in there. Not sure. Okay, so also mental healing. has also a lot to do with the blood as well because the fleshly foods and the impurities that are in the blood affect the mind and the um, viruses, the parasites, the impurities in the blood of animals especially those animals that eat food from rotten sources. For instance, the pig. The blood of those animals affects us mentally, affects our minds and affects our body and our spiritual perceptions. And so blood of those animals in particular is the most forbidden of all. Not because God wants to stop us from um, eating things that we want to eat, but because he's designed us in a certain way that we were never meant to eat the blood of animals or animals generally. So I'd like to now just read from uh, Functions of the Blood, Eight Facts About Blood. And this is, was found on the internet, it's called Visible Body. It has some pictures with it too to illustrate, but I can't put them up there this morning. It says the heart pumps blood through a vast network of arteries and veins. Blood is a living fluid. It transports oxygen and other essential substances throughout the body. So, what is blood? It's a living fluid. And it transports oxygen. Now, I'll just get it. Transports oxygen and other essential substances. throughout the body, fights sickness and performs other vital functions. So the blood fights sickness and performs other vital functions.
Blood is composed of 55% plasma and 45% formed elements, including red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Because of these living cells suspended in the plasma, blood is considered a fluid connective tissue. So blood is a connective tissue. Here it says. But it's fluid. As opposed to the other connective tissues. So this um, puts blood in a very special category because it's one of the main transporting agents throughout the blood. So blood is considered a fluid connective tissue, not a fluid. So it's not just a fluid that's running around in your body, it's actually a connective tissue which makes it more than just a fluid. It is the only fluid tissue in the body. Blood provides the body cells with oxygen and removes carbon dioxide. So it provides oxygen and removes carbon dioxide. Now, it brings oxygen into the body and it removes the carbon dioxide. So it's removing impurities. And it's bringing in necessities. It's bringing in the oxygen, which um, is essential. For the body to work properly. <clears throat> Blood absorbs ox oxygen from air in the lungs and it transports the oxygen to cells throughout the body. So how do our cells get their oxygen? Through the blood. It removes waste carbon dioxide from the cells. In the lungs, the carbon dioxide moves from the blood to the ear and is expelled. So the um, the oxygen, remove, the oxygen comes into the cells through the blood and then it removes the carbon dioxide. The blood transports nutrients and hormones. Blood plays a large role in digestion and endocrine system functions. Digested nutrients have are absorbed into the bloodstream through capillaries in the villi that line the small intestine. These nutri nutrients include glucose, amino acids, vitamins, minerals and fatty acids. Blood also transports some hormones secreted by the endocrine system, glands to target organs and tissues. So basically Blood is transporting nutrients and hormones. Next one is blood regulates body temperature. Blood absorbs and distributes heat throughout the body. It helps to maintain homeostasis through the release 
or conservation of warmth. Blood vessels expand and contract when they react to outside organisms, such as bacteria, and to internal hormone and chemical changes. These actions move blood and heat closer or further from the skin surface where heat is lost. So blood regulates body temperature. Platelets clot blood at sites of injury. When a blood vessel tears, platelets and plasma proteins work together to stop blood loss. Platelets um, clump and form a plug in the damaged area. The proteins from threads called fi fibrins caught to complete the pluglet platelet plug or clot. So basically they form clotting. The blood is used, um, the platelets in the blood clot. Clotting of injury to then repair the damage that is done. Blood brings waste products to the kidneys and liver. Blood transports waste substances to the organs that remove and process them for elimination. Blood flows into the kidneys through renal arteries and then out through the renal veins. The kidneys filter substances such as urea, uric acid, out of the blood plasma and into the urethras. The liver also removes toxins from the blood. During digestion it cleans blood that has been enriched with vitamins before sending it back out to the rest of the body. Okay, so Blood um, transports impurities to be filtered in kidneys and the liver. And then it recirculates that blood. that enriched blood which has nutrients and hormones in it okay blood is 55% plasma and 45% formed elements Red blood cells make up most of that 45%. Their primary function is to transport oxygen from the lungs to the cells of the body. Red blood cells are disc shaped. They are flexible and bioconcave, flat and round with depressed centers. White blood cells protect the body from pathogens. White blood cells are the disease-fighting components of the blood. They account for just 1% of circulating blood, but multiply during infection or inflam inflammation. There are five types of white blood cells. Then it mentions them, and 
They are important for disease resistance and fighting disease. So the white blood cells are for disease resistance and fighting infection and inflammation. So the blood is so important to us. The blood is so important. And this is why God said the life of the flesh is in the blood. The blood is the key to life. The blood of Jesus is the key to our spiritual life. He takes away the sin through the shedding of his blood and he puts life into us through that through his life-giving power in his blood so spiritually we are healed by the blood of Jesus but not only that we are also healed mentally by the blood of Jesus through the same process but we are healed uh, physically by his type of blood in the natural world which is seen in the vegetables and the fruits in particular and chlorophyll is one of the main um, factors in healing of disease and many people have based their healing methods on the use of chlorophyll for instance um, as in wheatgrass therapy barley grass herbs etc and not only chlorophyll, but the healing power of nature. And we're going to look at this um, healing power in nature in the next uh, study. There'll have to be one more to complete this. So next week we'll look at part two. And this deals with the healing power of nature. But we need to be careful about introducing substances into our blood which will destroy our health because the life of the flesh is in the blood. So when you introduce, for instance, alcohol or in introduce nicotine into the blood, which you're doing indirectly when you smoke, when you're introducing flesh foods, when you're introducing animal blood into your blood, when you're introducing mercury into your blood, when you're introducing aluminium into your blood, when you're introducing any alien substance into your blood, you're going to affect the health of your body and so if we want to get really healthy and live a really healthy lifestyle we should stay within the framework of God's healing of God's healing and the substances that God uses to heal are found in the nature that God created the nature that God created and these are balanced healing mechanisms that God has given for the healing of all. And we'll talk more about this um, next week when we do the second study on this. Thank you.